Rub up your engines! Okay, today we're gonna learn about oil burning Toyotas. This is the Scion, same company. Why do they burn oil? Which ones burn oil? Well, you're gonna find out in two seconds. Scions, they don't make them anymore. It was kind of a crazy Toyota marketing failure. Everybody knows Toyota makes great cars. Why on earth did they start making a Scion? Give it a different name. They had a good name. Why would you throw away a good name? I could understand Fiat changing its name to something else, but why Toyota? This Scion is the boxy Scion. If you like boxy cars, you like these. It's not as radical as those cubes that you see, but the XP is relatively squarish, rectangular car. Got a lot of room, a lot of space. This one's got 125,000. His mother bought it used, and he got it from her. It's an automatic transmission. Runs perfectly fine. Well, under the hood, as the bell tolls, is an oil burning engine. Now, sure, it looks all corroded, but that's because it's lived its life in New York State. That's just superficial, means nothing. Here's what you gotta understand about these engines is the 16 valve VVTI four cylinder inline engine. What you always wanna read out of the specs. As you can see here, this is the 2AZFE 2.4 liter engine. These engines, they had problems with the pistons wearing incorrectly. They didn't make them right, and they lead to burning oil. Toyota actually fixed a lot of them. They had to tear them apart, put new pistons and piston rings in, and they work perfectly fine and don't burn oil after that. But, as per usual, this car's older, higher mileage, they're not gonna fix this one for free. Although, after this video comes out, if he complains to Toyota in Japan, not in the United States, but in Japan, you never know. Maybe they'll put new pistons in. You never know, because I still see people getting frames on those rusty Tundras and Tacomas that they built where the frames rotted. They're still doing them, but it's very bizarre. Sometimes they'll say to a guy, we'll put a new frame on. Another guy with the same vehicle, same year that's rotten, they won't, depending on where they are, what part of the country. It's kind of a weird scene, but these, they didn't build the pistons right, and they burn oil. You see the same problem in the Camrys. Guess what? It's the same engine. It's a 2.4 2AZFE engine, and they have a problem with burning oil. Now, if you are looking at one of these, years, whatever, forget that. All you gotta do is look at the sticker. If it's a 2.5 liter engine, it's probably not gonna burn any oil. If it's a 2.4 liter engine, it probably is gonna burn a little bit of oil. Now, in the case of this one, it's relatively excessive. He runs through about a quart every 500 miles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it. So we'll take off the stupid beauty cover. It's not too beautiful anymore, because <laughs> it's lived in New York State for a long time. We'll get rid of all the 10 millimeter bolts on the ignition coil. Then we'll get a ratchet in the socket, take out the spark plugs, dust your giggles, we'll check one out. It's burning oil and these are rounded off, so it needs new spark plugs too, but that doesn't mean you put in spark plugs, it'll stop burning oil. It'll actually burn a little faster because it'll burn a little hotter. Now, as you can see by looking, they're all exactly the same. They all have that same burning wear on. And that's because it's a design flaw, like I said, of the pistons and the piston rings. Let's say you had a worn out piston ring, maybe one cylinder would wear out. Well, then that one would look bad and the rest look fine. They all look exactly the same. They're all burning about the same amount of oil. When you got the old compression tester, stick it in the hole and crank over the engine. Okay, crank it over. Now you can see number one is 170 pounds. That's decent. We'll check the other three. Number two is 160. It's a little bit more worn. Number three is about 162. And number four is about 150. It's the most worn one. Now that percentage itself isn't all that bad. It shows the engine's worn. It's got 120,000 miles on it. But now we're gonna do the real test. We're gonna put a teaspoon of oil in a cylinder at a time and do a wet compression test to see if it goes up. Now you can use a teaspoon, but it's kind of messy. I like these cool syringes. This is cool because it's got the measuring device right on it how much you're gonna put in. And we'll do the worn one first, stick it in the hole, so we know it's in. Now we'll do the test over. Okay, crank it over. And what do we have now? Almost 200 PSI. And that was a low one, it was a little over 150. That proves the piston and the piston rings don't fit tight anymore, because that little bit of oil seals the edge of the piston rings, and then the pressure goes up because instead of the pressure leaking around the piston and the ring and going to the bottom of the engine and creating blow-by, it seals it better. Now, you might think, well, they just put some oil in there. Well, it's only gonna last while the oil's there, right? 
<laughs> and the reason it burns oil is because when you're driving the car, the combustion of the engine, instead of being sealed on top of the piston, is going around the piston and burning oil too. Just for giggles, we'll do the other ones. Okay, crank it over. The pressure went up, but not as high, showing that there's less wear. Realize the pressure will always go up a tiny amount because nothing seals perfectly. And when you coat them with oil, it seals a lot better. But it just shows that just like the dry compression, number four was the worst, it went up the most. Number three was about the same as the other two, and it went up a little bit more, but not as much. So, you know, we know they're worn. The number four ones often wear faster, but why? Well, that's pure engineering. You got the water cooling and lubricating oil going in the engine. These cylinders are surrounded by cylinders that are cooled and lubricated. This one has a naked end on it. So usually the end cylinders will wear a little bit more than the other cylinders will. Now, unfortunately, it also leads to a little bit lower gas mileage. He's getting almost 25 miles a gallon driving it on a highway. Wow, I get 31 in this. They're about the same size vehicle, but realize that Matrix has a 1.8 liter engine. Every 5,000 miles when I change the oil, it's still at the same exact mark when I changed it and filled it up on the previous oil change. The 1.8s have less horsepower, but they're actually better engines that can last longer. Everybody that likes really fast whines at the Matrix and says, it's too slow, it's too slow. This thing will cruise at 85, 90 miles an hour all day long. It's plenty fast enough for me. I don't care, you know? The 2.4 liter engine has a lot more oomph than 1.8. That's just obvious. Only they didn't build these right. When they went to the 2.5, if you're looking at one, get one that's a little bit newer. It's got a 2.5, they do not burn oil if you change the oil all the time. Those were well-made engines. But these, unfortunately, the pistons and the piston rings wear. Toyota replaced a bunch of them free, but now that they're so old, usually you can't, but like I say, if you mention Scotty says this, show them the video, maybe they'll put new pistons in for you. You never know. Now, interestingly enough, on the oil cap, it says you can use 0W20 or 530. He was using the 020 and it burned even faster. So he switched to the 5W30 from Costco and it burns less now. So you can do that. And if you want to push it a little bit, you can even go 10W30 and make it a little bit heavier and it might go a little bit less. It's not going to hurt the engine by any stretch of imagination. The pistons and the rings are already worn. It's always going to burn some oil, but use a little bit heavier oil, the pressure will seal a little better too. So in this case, you can do that. You can put a little bit heavier oil in to make it last as long as it can. And whatever you do, don't forget to put the bolt that holds the ignition coils on because that's part of the grounding system. I learned this because one time I didn't put it on tight and the car was misfiring. It's because it didn't ground right, so make sure you get them on snug. So let's take a first spin and see how it runs. Then when you get inside, he's a big guy, I'm relatively big. Look at all the leg room. They really designed these things, including the back, for space. Now, you're relatively high up in the air for a little vehicle, and of course, it's not gonna ride like a Cadillac, but we're here on the bumpy roads of Rhode Island, and here's some bumps. It's a comfy ride, really, I, I gotta say. Truthfully, it's actually quieter and rides smoother than my Matrix does. Of course, the Matrix doesn't burn oil. And as you can see, it's not shaking. Hey, these are well-made cars, except for the oil burning problem. You can see it's got decent acceleration. The transmission shifts like a dream. They got great transmissions. The ace and transmissions can run forever. He sells sneakers online. He can put a lot of sneakers in the back of this thing. Let me tell you, and he loves the vehicle. He just hates it that it burns oil. So here we have the truth about an oil burning Toyota, Scion, same thing, made in Japan. This thing still runs like a clock as long as he keeps adding oil and replacing the spark plugs. They need replacement soon because they're getting all carboned up. But as long as you do that, and they're so easy to get to, it's a nothing job, you can still keep one of these. He's going to complain to Toyota after this video in Japan. Maybe they'll listen to him and fix it for him to be nice. Who knows? But it's still a very drivable car. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Boog and Heather Riordan says, Scotty, have you ever worked for a race team or would you go to work for one? What type of racing would you do? Thank you. Well, I could never work for any team. I work by myself or in my own business by myself. I don't work well with people because most people are full of baloney. Now, I love talking to people, learning things from people. But from my experience, when you're working with people, it becomes a chicken pecking order. Who's on top of who? Who's trying to impress who? And 
I don't like that kind of stuff. So I work by myself. You'll find that a lot of mechanics are extremely independent people. Even the ones that work for somebody, hey, they're in the back fixing your car. They're not dealing with a bunch of baloney. They're just battling the machines and fixing them, right? So most mechanics are fiercely independent. And working as a team, I would never fit in with any kind of team. And I'm too old to race them now. I'm not as coordinated as I was when I was young, you know? My eyes are worse than they were, so it's not going to happen. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.